in John chapter 5, the gospel of John. John chapter 5. Amen. John chapter 5. John chapter 5. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. John chapter 5. Hallelujah. John chapter 5. If you found me, say amen. amen. John chapter 5. We want to read from verse 1 through to verse 9. John chapter 5. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there, at, there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no one when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another stepped down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. Verse 9, let me stop there. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walk and on the same day was the Sabbath Father we thank you once again for your anointed words speak to our hearts, speak to me through me let your will be done Heavenly Father we honor you and we tell you thanks in Jesus' name Amen. Amen before you take your seats just look at the person next to you and say you are next Come on, I wish you could do it with purpose. You at your neighbor said, you, you are next. Come on, I need, I need, I need believers here. Come on, will you? All right, all right, all right. Will you? I will release you for a few seconds to remove from the seat you are seated in. Find somebody and tell them, point at them purposefully. Let them feel you with your finger up in their face and tell them you are next. I want you to speak with an attitude. Come on, let's do it. Come on, with an attitude. Find somebody and speak to them. Tell them you are next. Ah, come on, you are next. You are next. Come on, you are next. Come on, where, where, where are you? Where are you? All over this room, all over this room. Come on, you are next. You are next. Come on, yes, you are next. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on. Come on, 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 come on, you are come on. Are next. Amen. After this, maybe see it if you will. The scripture declared after this. After Jesus returning from working several miracles. And one of the last miracles that were mentioned before we get to chapter 5 was the healing of a servant. And here it is, it takes it after this, after he having 
done this healing. The text says he was heading to Jerusalem because there was a feast there. Feast of the Jew was in Jerusalem and he was heading to Jerusalem. It was custom brothers and sisters, I might have said yearly, for them to have this feast. So let's say it was another one of these exercises. Amen. He was on his journey to Jerusalem to this feast. Amen. But the Bible said now there was at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda and have five porches. But in this era the text says lay a great multitude of impotent folk, blind folk, halt folk, withered folk, and everybody was waiting for a season. Yes. All right, let, let's back up in the text. Jesus was on one of the customary journey, yes. one of the usual journey yes. into Jerusalem, yes. going to a feast, but something forces him to detour. <laughs> because, because this is it. On his way to Jerusalem, going to a feast, let me liken it to a party. A place where people will be gathering and there will going to be some kind of excitement. We found out that there are some people who want to be a part of it, but they have an issue. And I want to believe that Jesus is saying, Yes, it is huge and it's customary that I go there. But, 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 but there's a reason for me to detour. Maybe because somebody had me outside of the feast. Because I'm going to a place where, 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 where people where, will just be coming for custom. They'll just be coming because of the regular. But, but, but there's a people that are somewhere that have a need. And every now and then God will recognize where the needs of the people are. Look at the person next to you and God will find you wherever you are if you have a need. And, inst and what's this? instead of going to a feast, instead of going to a party, hear what Jesus says. Yes, I'm still in Jerusalem, but I'm going somewhere else. I'm going where I'm really needed. I'm going where my service is valued. I'm going where somebody really needs to meet with me. You see, when God has you on a mission, you are to divorce yourself from being in a company of people who don't value who you are. Can I preach to somebody here? Uh, yeah. Divorce yourself from people who don't value your service. Uh, can, can, can I talk to you here? Jesus said, I'm going where my service is needed. I'm not going to go and hang with people who will just come to socialize. I don't hang with people who just come to pass the time. I don't come to hang with people who want to go through the motions. I will come to hang with people who have a need. Somebody with a hunger. Somebody with a thirst. Somebody that has an issue and needs somebody to help them through. So then, he, he had no interest now in heading to the feast. And the Bible says here, Pastor, that he went to a place that is called Bethesda. He goes to a place that we found out that the meaning of this place is the house of mercy. Because he said, listen, listen, I'm going where you can find people who has been rejected by virtue of what they're experiencing. Mm -hmm. I'm not just going where I find people who just come to look and to enjoy the time. I'm going, I'm going where there are people who what's this, what's this, what's this, who have issues smiling. Mm -hmm. People that are overwhelmed with circumstances and they need somebody to empathize with them. What's this? I'm going where people are what's this, who have a longing, who have a crave for something different. I'm, I'm going to a place where people are desperate in need for a change in their life. I, I, I'm going to a place where people have been longing 
waiting for somebody to show up with something other than what they have been experiencing. And the text says now, he went to the Tesla, he went to the pool, and the text says, as he approached the pool, the writer began to identify to us the people that were there. The Bible said this place was filled with impotent people. Oh, push back to the Jesus. It was filled with people who are powerless. People that are breathing but are not moving. People that have eyes but they are not seeing. People that have legs and hands and feet but, but, but they were able to use them. People that have abilities but they have been shut down. They have been locked down. Oh, people that have potential but for one reason or another they just can't perform. People that have a tongue but they are not able to speak. People that have mind but they have been bombarded by issues. They are not even able to think. And the text says he went by Bethesda. And at Bethesda we found that there were some impotent people. And the Bible begin to give us another description. He said, here, here. We have some blind folk. Not people there that their eyes were God's out. They have the eyes, but they can't see. And every now and then, we are around people that have lost their vision, lost their ability to see in the future, lost their ability to see what's coming next, lost their ability to realize where they are, lost their ability to know that they are surrounded by people that even can't help them. Blind folk. Not only were they blind folk, but it takes them a halt. People. Oh, people that have an issue with their movement. People that keep dragging themselves here and there. They have their limbs. It was intact, but they have an issue moving. And not only that, but we found people that were really shriveled and shunked up because it did anything the enemy wants to do is to remove your vision, is to remove your ability to see when he's coming up in your houses, to see when he's coming up in your churches, to see when he's coming up in your life. And if the enemy can do anything, he wants to blind you. Please know the other night, we didn't have time to look at it. But when we saw Isaac, when he was blind, oh, I said, Jacob was able to fool him. And if you lose your sight, folk will, will make a mockery of you. When you lose your sight and you're not able to see, anybody will lead you. And there's no telling where they will carry you. And some of us have been led into the wrong places because they have lost our vision. Some of us that were great people in ministry, we lost our vision and we have other people leading us and they have led us to the wrong places. They led us to destruction. They led us into hurt. They led us into dismay. But I stop by to tell somebody tonight, we have something better. And point one more time to the person next to you. I said, neighbor, you don't even know what's about to happen. But I believe that God is about to pay you a visit. I believe that the Holy Ghost is about to do something extraordinary in your life. Hear the reading of the text. Blind people, Pastor. Hack their eyes, but they can't see. Uh, uh, because we're finding no ministries. The sinners have lost their vision. And the Lord says, if the watchman has lost his ability <laughs> to watch, to see the enemy, then the city will be overthrown. <laughs> and that's what the enemy wants to do. Remove the sight of the watchman. Remove the sight of the watchwomen. Oh, because when you lose your sight, uh, the enemy will have an opportunity uh, to overcome you. But we lay your hand on your perk and neighbor and say, neighbor, tonight you're getting back your vision. Come on, lay your hand on your neighbor and say, tonight you're getting back your vision. If you're lost, your spiritual ability, tonight you're getting back your vision. Uh, what, 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 if you lost your vision to see what the enemy wants to do to your family, tonight you're getting back your vision. 
Satan, you lost your ability to see when the enemy is coming in your church. Tonight you're getting that division. If you lost your ability to see when the attack is about to be launched, tonight some will have tonight. You will take back your vision. And there are some of us who just get dragged in ourselves. And as we drag, we leave trails behind us. Trails of disappointment and trails of hurt. Trails of mess. Can I talk to somebody? Trails of trouble. Trails of hurt. Not able to move properly because the enemy has overcame us. Uh, and here it is. The only place that these people could find relevance was at the pool. At the pool where there were people just like them hanging out. We learned people have all the body functions, everything intact, but shrunken up. Sucked in. We get what this have issue in extending themselves. No extension because they are shrunken. They can't expand. What's this? They become limited. They can't reach for nothing. They can't extend themselves. Because they are shrunken. They are being withered up. And the Bible says, here everybody gather because of some kind of superstition. They get here because of some sort of superstition. Because they heard, and maybe it was happening for real, that this pool, every now and then, an angel would have showed up unnoticed. What's this? No time you were given when the angel would show up. But peradventure, when the angel do show up, he would have troubled the water. And whomever get in first would be delivered. And here it is. The text says the entire area was filled with sick folk. Can I talk to somebody here? Oh, I believe somebody's wondering, am I going to be next? Oh, because, listen, please, please, please. I'm seeing where folk coming in have to join the line. There have to be a bumping and a pushing. A shoving and a tugging because somebody wants to be close enough so that whenever the water is trouble they can't go on in it. But what is even though that was the case, you notice that it was still filled up. But when Jesus got there, the Bible said he recognized that there was a man hanging at the pool, and he's been there for 38 years. The Bible said, Listen, when Jesus went there, what what, what got his attention was this brother. This man for 30 years, all right, real quick, he has been at the pool much longer than Jesus has been living. 30 years. Somebody said, it's been a while. Come on, talk to your neighbor, say, it's been a while. Oh, because there are some of us have been at a place in our life where there has been no improvement and we have been there for a very long time. So never it's been a while. It has been a while he's been there. And what's this? And he's not making any progress. All right, let me help you. He seems to be the longest liver at the pool. Oh, I don't miss that point. The longest liver at the pool. Pastor, I got the impression that there were other persons who came after him and they left him there. The other person who came in, they got what they came for. Uh, but he can't move. He's still at the same position. Years upon the every year, it's the same thing. Is anybody here tonight can attest to the fact that there are some of us, there are some errors in our life. We have some issues that we are having that kept on recurring. We wish that there would be a change. What's this? Some years ago, last year, we told ourselves that the year will never end it. And I don't get through this thing. I'm about it May right now in this year. And the same thing followed me from last year into this year. 
And if I should think about it, I had this issue the year before, the year before, the year before, the year before. The recurring issues are gone. It looks like it's not going to go away. For 30 years, he's been at the pool wishing to get a dip, wishing for somebody to help him, wishing that he would get an opportunity to be delivered. Uh, but he has been there a while because he kept wishing and nothing ain't happening. And I came to talk to those who are just wishing and ain't doing anything about your situation. He was there for 38 years arguing. Why haven't I yet been healed? And the testament Jesus came to the pool. Jesus saw him and knew he had been there a while. And the Bible said that when Jesus saw him, he went up to him and asked him a question. Will thou be made whole? Jesus shows up at the test. One of them says he should be at the feast. He ought to be at the party. He ought to be at the celebration. Uh, but how can I celebrate at a time like this? Oh, when there are people that need my service. You see, in ministry, you can't be selfish. But since when God has an assignment on your life, you can't be selfish. You have to prepare yourself to move at the moment's notice. You have to prepare yourself to do what God wants you to do. And there are many of us that God has given assignments that God has blessed. But we don't mind the party. We don't mind sleeping. We don't mind enjoying ourselves instead of doing the mission. He was at the pool. He was not at the feast. He's going where people have a need. And tonight God sent us here because somebody have a need. I wish you could holler. Somebody have a need. Oh yes, somebody have a need. Here is it. The text now tells us. Jesus said, will thou be made whole? Oh, yeah. yeah. Alright. Let, let me hear what was happening. He is, what's this? The first year he went there, he thought it would be the year. Yeah. The first year he ended up the pool, he thought, this is my year. But the second year caught him there. And the third year he was still there. Year four, so close, but yet so far. The fifth year he thought, it would have to be now. I'm trying to help somebody. Oh, because that's what happened to some of us. We are in a situation and we have been hoping we would have been out of it for a long time. Uh, but if we think we are still in it, the sixth year he thought this would be it. Because I got all the signs. Oh, I got dreams too. Not only that, but somebody gave a word of prophecy. Oh, this has to be my year. Seven years! And it's still the same. Going into the eighth year. Uh, can I suggest to you, by now, he start thinking less of this. Oh, this is, this is a waste of time. Getting weary of not being delivered. Getting weary of not coming out of your situation. You're getting weary of not seeing a change in your family. You're getting weary because you're still sick. And you pray often. Oh, God Almighty. If not fast, I have been fasting. Oh, but you're still feeling the pain. Well, it's not going to happen again. I suggest to you, some of us have got to the point where we throw in the towel and say it's been a waste of time. Doesn't make sense. I even think about it. If it's going to happen, let it happen. But I'm not even going to think about it anymore. But Jesus showed up on a day when he never even recognized he would. And Jesus looked at him and asked him this question. Do you still want it? We will turn to the neighbor and say, neighbor, do you still want it? Talk back to the neighbor. Do 
Studios. Oh, you gave up on having a child, but I asked you, do you still want it? You gave up on being married, but you asked, do you still want it? You gave up on a husband, but do you still want it? You gave up on a but do you still want it? Do you want it? What do you ask a neighbor? You ask a question. Do you still want it? Do you still want it? I know it looks like time has gone too far and it ain't gonna happen again. But I came to ask you a crazy question. I came to mess with your mind. I came to mess with your spirit. I came to come against everything that you have to do outside of what thou say. Do you still want it? Come on, ask your neighbor one more time. You might need to turn to the person behind you. I said, do you still want it? I know you have been promised. You have received it. And you are going to change in your mind. You are going to say it's not going to happen. You say it was a joke. You said I thought it would. But I think it ain't going to happen again. But Jesus said to me tonight to ask you, do you still want do you still want it? How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Do you still need it? Well done! Shit. We made it home. As I began to look at the text, I realized some people are living, but they're living in parts. Wow. Wow. Come on, that's deep picture. We are living in parts. to find out, are you comfortable being in a pot? <laughs> or do you want the whole thing? <laughs> oh, do you want the whole thing? Or you're settling in what you have? Do you want anything better? Or you're comfortable now with what you've been experiencing? I want what I never do you really want it. living in part. The text says, he answered Jesus by saying, every time I move oh, to the pool to get my deliverance, somebody blocking me. He said, somebody kept stopping me. He said, every time I try to develop myself, I run into roadblocks. I tried taking my subjects over and over, and I'm still getting famous. Oh God, every time I try that I can get out of this mess, there is still something working against me. If I tried, I haven't tried. So every time I make an attempt to get out of this hell all that I'm living in, something keep on blocking me. And there are some people here, you are being blocked. You are being stopped. Oh God. Because the enemy recognize that if you're ever being delivered, you won't be in the pool no longer. But you're going to be somewhere else giving worship. And I stop that and say, God, I have a plan for you. You're the Lord's enemy. God, I have a plan for you. Oh, uh, well, now we may hold. But when you point at the Lord's enemy, you are next. 
first. And then any time I try to get in the pool, somebody first me. And I wonder, will I ever get to the front of the line? And I realize to get to the front of the line, I have to be bumping and I have to be pushing. But can I tell you, Lord, I ain't got the strength. I ain't got the strength to fight. I ain't got the strength to fuss with folk. Try, but you have no. 
you see the rush on the pool? Don't you know when you know when me a come? Don't you know you might not make it? Well, when you sit amongst people who speak like that.
because everybody else speaks negative. Everybody else's word has not been able to move him. But when Jesus spoke, Jesus said, get up. Can I talk to you now? You know, for 38 years, he had been lying on a mat. We are unable to move. But when Jesus said, get up, can I talk to you Suicide. And all they want to find is somebody to give them a word of encouragement. Somebody about to murder somebody. And all they need is something else to give them a word of encouragement. Somebody about to breathe the last breath. Or they want to find somebody who can tell you can live another day. All you need about situation is somebody else to tell you.
You tell the doctor. Can the doctor? Can I preach to somebody? And where I'm going now, somebody needs a testimony. No more. I heard you to tell a man. I ain't coming back no more. Oh, 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 oh. I've been depending on you for so long, but God has now strengthened me. I can't do without you. I come to tell somebody to stop. Get up on a fornication. Get up on a fornication. Oh, no, no. 
enemy is still fearful. But the problem is you don't move yet. Jesus told God told Moses when they stood before the Red Sea. He said, stretch your hand. What is this? Israel was thinking about backing up. But he said, keep moving forward. There's no one keep moving forward. Don't you lose your feet. There's somebody, you missed the dance. But God is unshackling your feet. Somebody, you missed an opportunity to raise your hands. But God is loosening your hands. We got to say, neighbor, move forward. We got the person next to you. I say, move forward. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Can I tell you what? God has made, God has made it bad. Yeah, right now. He just wants you to Now that God healed you, 
Where will you be going? Because that's God desire to heal it. Where are you going to go? Have you missed 38 years of dancing in the party? 38 years of gossiping? 38 years of womanizing? What are you going to do after this? Well, I'm closing. Because the Bible said, Jesus saw him some days after. And he found him in the temple, Pastor. Ask your neighbor, what you gonna do after this healing? What you gonna do after this breakthrough? What are you gonna do after this deliverance? What are you gonna do after receiving this word? The Bible said he was found in the temple. Don't take all that. 
But can I tell you, when some of us were so sick that we couldn't move, Come on. we wish that God is just here. Thank you. 